Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. A new major update has been released and a new DLC pack has come along with it and that is what we're going to look at today. So without any fluff, let's just dive in to what the base game got. Now I'm not going to cover the stuff like the GPS coordinates and all the bug fixes and all that, just the interesting items. So first thing added to the base game is a small block ladder which is bloody fantastic. I can think of so many situations where I've seen ships that would benefit from having this just because you can't reach the cockpit from the ground without using your jetpack. The small ladder costs exactly the same as the regular ladder which is 10 construction components, 10 small sealed tubes, 10 more construction components and 10 interior plates. Exact same size for the exact same cost. And there we are, we can just hop onto it and just climb up on a small block grid which is great. And then we come across to some armor skins. This is the rusted armor skin, which everybody gets. And it does look great, especially if you were to apply it to the bottom of a land vehicle or a ship that's been going on for such a long time. It just gives it that nice old used look to it. And we can change the color. So if I was to come over to here and just find, there we are, a block, and then just apply it down to here. There we are, we can change it. The rust color stays the same, but the block behind it will go to whatever colour you have selected. Then we move across to the next one, which is the battered armour skin, which looks fantastic for spaceships, or even ships if you're using the water world. It just gives it that little bit of extra armour plated look that doesn't look super clean like the standard armour blocks or the clean skin. It just makes it look like a proper ship. And we can once again change the colour. So there we go. Just change the colour like that. We still get the grey smudginess onto it like so, it's simply the back blocks which change. And it does look great no matter what colours you use. In fact, let's change it to, ooh, let's go for a nice a bright pink. The brighter colours do seem to make the actual wear and tear of this block disappear compared to the more darker. So if I come like this and just paste it in, there we go. Yeah, it does come across a lot more cleaner unless you use a dark block like so then you can really see all the dirt on it. Then we can come across to the final piece, which is the camouflage, which I absolutely adore. I love this skin. It's just no reason to have it at all. It's just there and I'm going to use it a lot. And we can once again change the color. It will sort of change the black on it, but it will mainly change the background. So there you go. The blacks become a little bit lighter. In fact, that might be a bit greeny. Yeah, but it does change it to be a bit more lighter. There we are, we can have a pink camouflage. We then come over to this one, where we get a bit more darker on the blotches. For a nice blue. Then we can try a red out. And there we go. It's just a nice little skin to have and some great additions to the game. But now we're on to the DLC pack, which is going to be the main portion of this video. One item I don't agree with being in the DLC pack, because it proves to be such a useful block for the base game, which will be this one. I'll come back to that in just a tick. We have to start over, yeah, with this little decorative block. So this is called the lab equipment. It is simply a decorative block for you to paste in your world. It does have an access panel on it if you wanted to do that. And it does have a little LCD screen on there. So if you want to put text and images on there, you can do so via so. And this is it going all the way around. We just have some nice block work on there, little jars, little cylinders, little containers some warning signs and all that going all the way around. It does look good. Then moving across to this, these are the freight crates. We get three different types and here they are. They are exceptionally cheap to make, but you do have to bear in mind that these are containers with no connection points on them. So we can walk up to there, we can dump stuff into it and there we go. It makes a great combination with the little driver's seat over there if you wanted to make a little cargo vehicle. But yeah, they are a nice little alternative to using the standard crate. So the costs of these is one interior plate, eight construction components, and a five interior plate for the small one, which can carry up to a thousand. Then we have the next block, which is the freight two, which is basically double the resources, which can carry up to two thousand. And then we have the last one, which is freight three, which doubles that resource once again, where you can carry three thousand. And this is a closer look at the blocks. They do glow when you go near them. They have got some great textures on them. 
Then we move across to this, which Wombo combos with the toilet. This is the shower, which comes in at 10 interior plates, 8 bulletproof glass, 12 small shield tubes, 20 construction components, and 10 more interior plates. And this is what we get, a non-interactable shower. I don't think there's any control panels on this at all. It's simply a nice little decorative block for you to put in your world. So we get a little sink there, get our shower on the outside. It just looks like a standard block. But we can, if we wanted to, come over here and find a toilet, which is this one over here. Let's give it a nice plain skin. Then just connect it up like so. And there we go, we've now got ourselves a proper toilet setup where the toilet is sitting over there and a shower which sits there. So you can combo these together to get quite a nice little room. Please be quiet, I know my energy's low. So yes, there's that. Then we move across to this, which I'm not too happy about being locked to the DLC pack because it is one of those blocks which would be great for everyone to have hold of. So I'm sure a lot of vehicles on the workshop will start to use these. So this is a small block cockpit essentially there is it's called the small control seat it's 10 interior plates two displays 15 computers one motor 15 construction components and 10 interior plates and it looks great you can finally build a land buggy and not have a hideous cockpit sitting on it but instead use this which if you were to look down you hold a little control your feet go on the pedals and yes we've got a little screen there for us to put stuff on and it does look great there we are the only thing with this compared to the regular cockpits is there is no access point on this, so you cannot connect it up to a cargo container and funnel stuff into it. Yes, it's a rather fancy block and it's a shame that everybody doesn't get access to it. Then we move across to this, which is called the Medical Station. It is five construction components, two displays, one medical components, two motors, 10 construction components, 15 interior plates for a decorative block with some panels on it. Now you can't actually use this, there is no way to heal on it. We can simply access these panels over there, but it is there for extra decoration, which is great. It's a shame you can't use it as a cryobot really, just get on there, lay on there and just regenerate and all that. But still, it's nice to have if you are building a science bay, because you could use the first block over there along with it. And then moving across to this little block right here, which I adore, I really do, I've been wanting something like this for a long time because I've been using spotlights on rotors to get a disco going. But this is called the rotating light. The only downfall with this block is you can't change the light on both sides. If you change the colour of it, you're going to change both sides, so you will have to place two if you want to create a disco. This block only costs one construction component, one motor and two more construction components to build, so it is dirt cheap. Coming over to a control panel, I'll go through some of the options we can do. So here is rotating light, we can change the colour, much like the standard spotlights and interior lights. Coming down to here, we've got our radius, our intensity, offset and all that. And most importantly, a rotation speed, which I think they added in with the patch this morning. So I'm pretty sure this option was not here before. So yeah, we can make it really slow, we can make it really fast, but I'll leave it like that for now. And then we come across to this, which is also bloody fantastic, which is railings. Yes, so we get a straight railing, which is this one right here. We then get the double railing, a diagonal railing, a corner railing. Yes, they are sort of cheap to build. They are a little bit expensive for my taste. But on the plus side, you don't have to build them completely. You can just put them in down with a single block and you'll simply lose out the middle bar there and it will still look great. So the straight rail costs four construction components, six small steel tubes, and four more construction components. The double railing simply doubles the cost. And then we have the diagonal, which is six construction components, nine small steel tubes, and six more construction components. And then the corner railing, which is eight construction components, 12 small steel tubes, and eight more construction components. Now these blocks are great because it means we no longer have to resort to catwalks to put a perimeter fence around your base because they can be quite awkward to place down because they do take up quite a lot of room and can be quite ugly and we don't have to use cover walls because they can't do corners these have got us all covered which is bloody fantastic now on to the next one which is also fantastic which replaces catwalks entirely are the grated catwalks so the grated catwalks are a rather fancy block and you can double them up underneath and they don't really create too much of a hideous effect. In fact, it makes it look a lot better. So yes, we get a standard 
catwalk, which means just place down, which is this thing right here. If I scroll wheel up, we'll then get the straight with two bars on either side. So they're the same bars as the railings over there. We then get a corner catwalk, where as you expect, it's got the corner bars on it. And then we have a single bar on one side. So this would be like for looking down over stuff while you have a brick wall behind you. And the costs aren't too bad. It's construction components, small sealed tubes, girders, and more construction components. With small sealed tubes being the odd one out, which requires quite a lot of them, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. Then we move across to this one, which is also a great addition to the game, which are stairs. And they have railings on them, so no more needing to use window blocks or the really long stairs. We can simply have these ones, which are one block long. It's fantastic. And you can see underneath them, and they're not hideous, so you don't have to hide them. So we can walk up this one, which is simply a offset tiny one, which is this one right here. It simply sits on the side of the block, and it only costs 10 construction components, 8 interior plates, 6 small sealed tubes, and 10 construction components. And then we have the big boy, which covers the entire block, which is 10 construction components, 16 interior plates, 12 small sealed tubes, and 12 more construction components. And these do combo together really nicely with the catwalks. If I was to come around to here and just go and place down a catwalk like that. Oh, nope, that's the wrong block. We need a plain catwalk. I just come like that. And then just start building off the top here. There we go. You can do something like that. So we just walk up our stairs and come across these fancy new catwalks and see directly below us. Then moving along to here, we then got some more additions which will be great for large ships, which are window blocks that come split into three different parts. So we've got our left, our middle, and our right. The left and the right cost the same, which are five construction components, eight bulletproof glass, five more construction components, and ten steel plates. And then the middle one simply costs a bit more bulletproof glass and a little less steel plates. And there we go. We just get these. They're really nice. Can't interact with them at all. And this is them from the opposite side. And then we move across to this, which is another fantastic addition to the game, which I believe was also a mod on the workshop, which is transparent LCD screens. So we get this little thing right here, which costs 10 bulletproof glass, 10 displays, 6 computers, and 8 construction components. And this is what we get. Just interact with it, we can type stuff on there if we wanted to, and then just access the control panel, find the LCD screen. If I can spell properly, there we go. Just change it to text. Just make the text really big. There we are. We can do stuff like that. If I come over to the panel once again, we can come down to here and say add in some images. Let's just come over there. Text and images. I would like to have, ooh, let's have a screen on there so we can have a white screen. We then add in logos, which look great, and you can have your text above it. We come over to here and find another one. What do we want? Ooh, let's have... Let's have a blueprint in there. Let's add that to the selection. Let's just remove that. Ooh, and now we've got a blueprint on there. It does look great. Especially if you were having them around your cockpit, because then you can still see what's going on. Maybe even have a targeting reticle in the dead center here and use it as a aiming screen rather than relying on a projector. And then we move across to what happens to be the greatest block ever added into Space Engineers, and I highly doubt this is ever going to be beaten, and that is the Jukebox. The Jukebox costs 5 interior plates, 4 displays, 4 computers, 10 construction components, and 10 interior plates. And as you could probably guess, it plays music, and it comes out of your, your sound volume, not your music volume. So if you want to hear this properly, turn down your music volume and increase the sound volume. So we can access it by just clicking on the screen. We got our volume, we got our range. It basically acts like a regular sound block, but it does have a few more fancy stuff in there. So we could have, ooh, build music. Then we can press this button, which is an actual button. And we get music. We can press it to stop. We can even queue up songs in there. So if I want to, I could just go and queue in, ooh, some alien music, some fun music. I was just to go back, let's have some alien music. There we go. And then the greatest song of all time, the fun music. Here, let, let me just make this even better. Here 
it's so terribly good that I'm going to have this playing on all my vehicles. But yes, there is this sound block. You can play music. I have no idea if you can put custom music in there. There is a music folder in the Space Engineers directory, but I haven't tested out putting in a MP3 file or anything like that. Yes, we just skip with these buttons and then we can press play and it will play the music. And this is all the way around. It does have little holes on the side. It has little speakers at the front there. It just looks great. Then we come across to this, which is a vending machine, which costs 10 interior plates, 10 computers, 10 displays, 4 motors, 10 construction components, and 10 more interior plates. And we can interact with this because we can't put anything in. We can spend our precious space credits for some Clank Cola. So we can press this. Thank you for your purchase. And it shoots out a can at great speeds. And it's over here. Then we just come over to here and eat it. I'm not too sure what it actually does, but we can consume it. There we go. I think it just restores some health. And we do have a few other options if I was to press this button up here. We can have some cosmic coffee, which if I press it, it will actually just fall out there. And we can just collect it up. There's nothing else to control there. It's simply fun to spend all your money on some clan cola by spamming them all out. And they all come out over here. And they'll slowly roll down back to the vending machine. I mean, you could try and kill people with this. And that ultimately covers all the blocks added in the DLC and all the fancy stuff added to the base game. Remember, there is one new scenario for you to go through and play, and it does seem to have mines and stuff for you to go and explore. But yeah, the DLC pack, I think, is definitely worth it. The only outlier here is this seat, because this is going to be used for small vehicles, and it definitely will get a lot of use, especially when you want to make a little land buggy, a little land rover, and you don't have to use those hideous cockpits that, well, just look ugly on small vehicles. Now the other thing which I will just mention right now is that they have cleaned up the block menu. So they've made it really, really short, which I'm not too happy about because it is kind of annoying. So under the seat, we then have our passenger seat, flight seat, and our new seat. Then like under the planter, we then have the kitchen blocks and all the containers. And yeah, it does seem to be a little bit too too strict on how they've put these all together to the point where it's quite hard to find certain blocks unless you type it in. And as for that, that about covers all things important with this update and DLC pack. There was a few more little things on there, but I won't bore you with the GPS stuff. So that is it for this video. Hopefully this has been helpful in case you're wondering whether the DLC pack is worth it or not. I certainly think it is, especially for the jukebox, the railings, and the catwalks, and especially the stairs. They are fantastic blocks to have, because it seems like the more DLCs that get added to the game, the less reliant I become, and I'm sure a lot of other people become, on the workshop mods, because this is starting to put a little bit of dent on Ixter's decoration pack, especially with the railings and all the other stuff that have been added to the game in the previous DLC packs. So yeah, that is it for this video. Hopefully it's been helpful and let me know what you think of this DLC pack in the comments section below. So thank you all for watching and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.